Welcome to the Quick Train Modeler Getting Started tutorial series. This is part two of a 10 part series designed to get new Quick Train Modeler users up and running as quickly as possible. In this module, you will learn how to load 3D data, both point clouds and surface models, overlay 2D imagery, and navigate through the scene in 3D. If you would like to follow along with the same data and imagery used in this video, feel free to download it from Applied Imagery's website, appliedimagery.com. Click the download tab and scroll to the bottom of the page. Download the Des Moines LiDAR data and imagery zip file. You will need to unzip it prior to using it with Quick Train Modeler. If you are going to use a Des Moines LiDAR data, this is how it will be organized. The point cloud data and imagery will be cut into nine adjacent areas called tiles and numbered A1, A2, A3, and so on. When we load everything together, you won't be able to see the seams between the tiles, but the individual tiles will be listed in the layer tree and you will be able to turn them on and off individually. The digital elevation model, or DEM, and the digital surface model, or DSM, and the four band imagery mosaic will all cover the entire nine tile area with a single file. In chapter one, we covered the quick train model screen layout and basic terminology. So let's just jump right into loading data. There are actually four ways you can load data in Quick Train Modeler. First, drag and drop from Windows Explorer. Note that this only works for 3D models such as point clouds and DEMs. It will not work for 2D imagery. Here we're just grabbing an LIS file and dropping it into Quick Train Modeler. Second is double clicking on a file. Simply go to Windows Explorer, double click on an LIS file, and this file will be launched in a new window of Quick Train Modeler and the data should appear automatically. Third is by using the search tool to find geospatially relevant data. This is most useful if you know the coordinates or location of the data you need, but do not know where it exists on your hard drive or server. Search for the data, highlight it, and load it into the scene. Lastly, use the open or add model buttons on the button bar. This method is most useful if you're familiar with the location and organization of your files. We'll use this method because the Des Moines sample data is relatively small and we already know the tiling scheme, naming convention, and organization of the files. We'll start by loading all nine LAS files in the Des Moines Point Cloud folder. LAS is the most popular file standard for distribution of point clouds, so just click the Open Model, navigate to the Des Moines Point Cloud folder, and load all nine files. You should now see all nine tiles loaded and visible in the layer tree. Loading 2D imagery is treated differently than loading 3D point clouds and surface models. As discussed in Chapter 1, QT Modeler calls overlaid 2D imagery textures. To drape an image on the loaded point clouds, click the Import Texture button, navigate to the four band imagery folder, and select the mosaic, which is the single image that will cover all nine tiles. It will load and be visible in the textures folder, in the layer tree, and of course in the scene itself. If for some reason the texture is not visible, make sure the texture is checked in the layer tree and the textures toggle on the toolbar is clicked on. Now that we have 3D data and imagery loaded, let's start navigating through the scene. First, we'll expand the special overlays folder and make sure that crosshairs are checked. This is a useful reference for the center of rotation and tilting. The basic movement modes are zoom with the mouse wheel, in and out, rotate, hold down the left mouse button, drag right left, tilt, hold down the left mouse button and push pull, and pan, hold down the right mouse button and change the center of rotation of the model. Here are some helpful navigation shortcuts. Use the zoom out button to reset the view to full extents. This can be very helpful if you get lost in the model. Double click on any location to bring it to the center of rotation. Type N to go north up and nadir, which is the straight down view. And lastly, you can navigate in the minimap by right clicking and dragging a rectangle at any point in the minimap to zoom to that area in the 3D scene. The last thing worth mentioning is how to remove data. There are two approaches. To remove a single file from a list of files, right click on it in the layer tree, select remove, and that file will be removed from the scene. The second approach is to remove everything. Click the clear all button, which looks like a trash can, and then just select yes, and all files and imagery 
will be removed from the scene. That concludes Chapter 2 of the Quick Train Modeler Getting Started series. At this point, you should be comfortable with learning 3D data, 2D imagery, and navigating through the 3D scene in Quick Train Modeler. Our next step will be to customize the view in the 3D scene. Please view the rest of the series on our website and contact us if you need any help. We'd love to hear from you.